Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Leg MRI, and this is an MRI of the wrist. A lot of people get uh, very nervous when they see an MRI of the wrist because they're not a very common exam, and they're asked to evaluate the triangular fiber cartilage, and it has all these attachments, and it can be very confusing. And so uh, after you panic, slow down and think about just some basic things about the triangular fiber cartilage. This is a patient who has a tear. I'll go over some just quick anatomy and show you what is going on here. So this is a coronal fat sat PD sequence. We see the triangle of the fibro cartilage here coming off horizontally between the ulna and the base of the lunate bone here. It attaches over here on the radius and right in the very central portion, the epicenter, we call that the central disc. It's a nice big fat central disc. Now if the ulna is too far forward, we call that an ulnar positive variance and you can see how if the ulna was up here at the same level as the radius, the triangle of the fibro cartilage would be compressed and it'd be mass effect. Um, between the uh, ulna and the base of the lunate bone here. They call it ulnar abutment. But this is a nice normal position, a little bit shorter than the radius. Plenty of room for this, a nice big thick central disc. Now if we go one cut one direction, one cut the other direction, we see the dorsal and volar bands. So here at the radial attachment, it's fairly broad. You have the dorsal band, central disc, palmar band, and then it comes off towards the ulnar styloid. It gets more narrow distally. And here we have two attachments. We have attachment to the little trough here, this cupped area, this is called the fovea. We have a foveal attachment. If we look here, we don't really see a nice dark foveal attachment. We see this foggy gray um, signal coming up. Over here we see a few little strands coming off the, uh, the ulnar styloid. And on this cut here too, we should see a component coming over and coming here and straight attaching to the ulnar styloid. And we do not see that either. So this is an example of a torn foveal and styloid attachment of the TFCC. The central disc, the dorsal and volar bands here are nice and dark and perfect. So it's just an ulnar sided attachment. And it may help to know that uh, when they do surgery, I've gone to a couple of these and I was impressed at how hard it was to see anything in this little bitty space. They really can't see very much. So really they want you to say, is it normal or abnormal? And if it is abnormal, um, you know, where the tear is and, um, and just if you think there's a tear, then that'll give them the opportunity to go in there and uh, fix it. But uh, if there were a really s subtle area that you call, you know, they may not even be able to see it very well. And so the pressure is off. They used to be very nervous about like, oh, I'm calling some subtle thing and they can see it. And really it's hard to see much of anything. What they do see sometimes is if you don't call a tear, if there's a big tear, then they can see a, a hole. They, they, again, they can see this bottom surface here and they can sometimes see a defect. So if you miss something, it's easy for them to see that oh, there's a, a hole you missed. Uh, but as far as being really specific with the anatomy, I don't think the, that there's much pressure there because it's just so hard to see um, when they do surgery. Now the TFCC also has attachments here to the lunate, triketral bone, and the ulnar joint capsule here. It looks like the capsular portion is torn. There's fluid track in there and the capsule is uplifted a little bit. And these other attachments are small and I do not see a tear of the carpal attachments. So there it is, a tear of the styloid and fovea attachments and ulnar joint capsule attachments to the triangular fiber cartilage. And thank you very much.